Dobre jutro. <laughs> ja sam Uriel iz uh, agenciji 04. Uh, za vaše dobro. Uh, danas uh, ću pričati engleski. <laughs> dobro. <laughs> ok, uh, I'm Muriel from uh, agency uh, 04. Today I would like to talk to you about RIM database uh, and now some way to persist data on mobile. Uh, but first of all, I would like to ask you some few questions like, okay, how many developers do we have here in the room in the mobile? Mm. <laughs> uh, how many of you uh, have heard before of Realm? Maybe? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So what is Realm database? Uh, Realm database is an alternative to SQLite in Android and uh, core data on iOS. Uh, but today I will uh, focus about uh, Android because I, don't, I have just 25 minutes. Uh, but uh, the principle is the same. So it's also available on multiple platforms and it's uh, open source. We can see uh, here it's, av on, it's available on uh, Android, iOS, Xamarin, and uh, JavaScript, for instance, uh, React Native, I think, and Node.js. Uh, I would like to have a remote for this. <laughs> so, even though Realm is not, uh, it's a NoSQL uh, database, it still has this principle of schema. And uh, to create your schema with Realm, it's as simple as just extending the Realm object, and uh, you have your schema. It supports uh, private field, protected field, as well as uh, custom method. Uh, you can define primary keys with the annotation uh, primary key on any field, index any field with uh, the annotation, of course, index. But uh, primary key and uh, index support primitive types, string, and they are, uh, all the integers, uh, all the objects from the, of the object were perform primitives, which are like integer, uh, boolean, long, double, etc. So if you want to ignore some field, you just use, for, of course, annotation ignore. <coughs> so in case you would like to have some kind of list in your schema, you will have to use a real list. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately the only way. Or if you like to have some kind of one-to-many relationship, uh, real list uh, support every uh, object that extend uh, Realm uh, object, as well as string, and uh, the integers, uh, boolean, double, float. So, uh, write operations with Realm has to be wrapped inside the transaction. So, uh, in order for, for, for any, uh, for any uh, write transactions, you need to in your realm instance, uh, called the begin transaction. For for example, here we have uh, we created a, a object, uh, a manage realm object person. Then we set uh, the name of it, and then at the end you need to call commit transaction or cancel the transaction if something happens. So I mentioned like uh, a, few, a few seconds ago about uh, uh, manage object by realm because it's very important to understand that RAM, uh, with manage RAM object, uh, they live within the underlying RAM of your application. So you cannot uh, Z or manipulate any manage RAM object zetas outside of the transaction. So it's very important to, to get that one right. So uh, many times in the mobile development, we have already objects, but how do we uh, get those objects inside our database? So in this case, we will have to use uh, copy to RAM. Copy to RAM will uh, take your, your data and insert them or create entries if, not, if they don't exist, or they will, um, if any entity exists already in your database, they will just keep it. But the good thing with that is that it will return you the manage realm object or the realm list. Copy 
to rent or update, it's similar to copy to rent, but uh, if an object already exists, it will update the object. But the thing is here, you have to provide the primary key, otherwise it will throw you a NAS exception. So insert is the, the fastest amongst uh, three of them because it does not have to return you anything. It will behave exactly like uh, copy to RAM, but if you do not provide a primary key, you might have duplication in your database. So it's uh, highly advised to always provide some kind of primary key in order to keep your data consistent. And uh, uh, since it's a right transaction, of course, it needs to be wrapped inside a transaction. So you can see in the example, we begin the transaction. Uh, here, we, co we, we copy to RAM, or we copy to RAM or update, or you insert, but it needs to be inside the transaction. At the end, we commit the transaction. So uh, in the previous slides, uh, I mentioned a lot uh, commit transaction or cancel or begin. So you can already have already noticed the boilerplate behind it. But uh, REM offer you this nice uh, method, which is execute transaction, we will, which will do the, the, the job for you. It will uh, begin the transaction, commit or cancel it if something happens. Although REM is it's really fast, it's, uh, the, the right transaction are blocked. So it is very important not to run it inside the, the, the main thread or the UI thread. Uh, by using uh, execute transaction like sync, uh, REM will make sure that your transactions are performed in the background thread and uh, give you uh, an call to call you back if you provide the callbacks on the caller thread if it was successful or if it fails. But you need to, you need to remember that uh, the callbacks, uh, when they are provided, they need to be inside a thread which has a looper. Otherwise, uh, Realm will throw you a very bad exception. Query. Uh, the thing I like with, with RAM is that it's re it really has a very fluent interface. So uh, you can see how uh, here, I, uh, in my real instance, I, I want to look in person where name is equal to Tommy or uh, the name is equal to, to Nicole. So as simple as that. And then I have my query. And then you return me every one in my database which has either Tommy or Nicole. Query are lazy, so it doesn't matter. So your RAM result, even though it has one million records, uh, all the all those records are not actually loaded. So they are all lazy, and the only time that the query are going to be performed is through the getters. So this makes the whole thing extremely efficient, and you don't have to worry about the pagination, for instance. So that's one good thing. Zero copy. So RAM has this zero copy architecture. So on a traditional ORM, in, uh, for instance, on Android, uh, when you perform a, an SQL query, so the mechanism of the ORM will probably will translate all your, uh, your query in some kind of series of SQL uh, statements. They will be sent to the, to, the, to the disk and perform the query. It will load. Uh, all the data from uh, the matches rows, and then send it back to, to the RAM to allocate first the memory, and then those data will have to be decentralized into a format where the uh, memory could, uh, could understand, therefore the CPU could understand. And only then that, uh, that, that data will have again to be interpreted into a uh, language level type, and believe me, this is very costly, very, very costly. So with REM, it skipped the whole copy process, so the whole deserialization thing. So because REM file, REM file are memory mapped. So REM will access subset of your file as if it was already loaded in the memory. It's 
it's some kind of uh, virtual memory, and that makes things extremely efficient and extremely fast. <coughs> So query, apart from, apart from filtering, uh, Ring also support a lot of uh, operations uh, when, when, they are, when you are performing queries like logic operations, shortings, limit, for instance, you can see here, at the end, I set the limit of my search to two, and it will return me only two if it finds anything at max. Live object. So, when objects are live across your application. So it doesn't matter, in any thread, you have always the latest update of objects. So, for instance, you can also register to a RAM object, and everywhere across your apps, it doesn't matter any thread, it doesn't matter the thread, if there is a change on that data which has anything to do with the query you performed before, you are going to get notified. So for free, REM gives you this reactive approach. So you just react on change. You don't have to pull the, your database every five seconds, or in case something happened in one screen, send, send some kind of event for the other screen to pull anything in the database. So with REM, you get a free reactive approach. So this is one of my favorite features at REM. So uh, yeah. Uh, for example, on, on Android, we have this recycle view. And usually, when we get a list of uh, huge data, it can be uh, troublesome to uh, nicely update the list with the new data. You have to use some different utils, tools, for example. But uh, when you are using other RAM collection change listener, you are not going to just get notified when there is a change, but you are going to get the change Z. So how many, uh, how many data in your uh, list has been deleted, removed, or updated? Also, every index, so you can efficiently and nicely uh, update your UI. So it gives you that better user experience. Before using RAM, it needs to be initialized first. So it's a good practice, for, for instance, in Android, we do that on uh, application level. After on create, we initialize it like that. Uh, you can also set a config configuration into RAM, so you can set your database name, database path, uh, excuse me, uh, schema ve version, uh, your, imp your migration implementation, because yes, RAM also supports uh, migration. Encryption. So uh, RAM also gives us some uh, encryption support uh, with a 512-bit encryption key. And in order to define that, you just need to set it on your configuration file, uh, sorry, configuration object, and then you set it, uh, you set uh, the default configuration uh, object. But uh, it's best practice also to do that right after you init your, your RAM. And that's it. Later on, in order to retrieve it, you just use a RAM get diff, for instance, and then that's it. So since it's, it, since it implement uh, closable, it's very important to, to close the RAM when you don't need it anymore, just to free the native resources. Uh, it's also using some kind of internal uh, reference counting. So if in one thread you reference a RAM three times, four times, you need to close it also three times or four times to be effective. Uh, the good, zero copy. This is one of my uh, favorite feature at RAM. It's fast, it's blazing fast. Uh, so far, we have, I have done uh, query in the main UI, and I haven't uh, had any issues so far. It, it didn't uh, block the user experience. So, Theoretically, every query or every action you perform in the main thread is going to block the UI. But 
you do not want to perform it to perform it long enough for the user to notice. So we've ran it extremely fast that it won't. Uh, I never noticed uh, any query where the the UI will skip some frame or the user will actually notice anything. It's easy to use. It's reactive. It's available on multiple platforms, and it's open source. The kind of bad. Uh, you cannot share RAM object between threads, unfortunately. Uh, they have that excuse that it's extremely fast that you don't need to, but still it will have been nice to be able to like, okay, uh, be able to do that if you want to. But so far, this hasn't been much a problem for me since everything is it's extremely fast. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you do the query, I don't need to do in one thread and then populate the result in another thread. Uh, Auto-incrementing IDs are not supported, so if you want to do that yourself, you have to do that magic yourself. So that's also something that is can be kind of uh, bad for me. The APK size on Android can be a bit bigger, but that's also subjective. <laughs> Today with uh, app bundles, you don't have to worry about these kind of things because uh, the Google Play will optimize your APK for every uh, platform or for every uh, Android device. So uh, this is where you can find more information about Realm. That's their website. They have a very, very solid documentation. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions, maybe? Uh, what about Realm versus Room for managing data? Uh, that, that's actually a very good question because uh, with uh, Room today you have also this live data support. Uh, I will say that at the end of the day it's uh, up to, to you, but I will still prefer uh, Realm. Why? Because uh, my query are much faster. It's much easier for to set up Realm because really as you saw how to declare your schema, you don't have to worry. Or with Room, you need to define your entities, uh, define your database, provide the, 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 the query for those. So it's a bit more complicated to set up, and it doesn't have that speed. At the end of the day, Room is still uh, SQLite, so it's just a wrapper. So yeah, everything is valid so far, because Realm is just way faster in everything else than Room. Any other question? Okay, thank you, Mr. Muriel. Thank you.